Hello, hello, and welcome back to the State of the Fandom. Uh, this is day two of the simulation, and uh, I am your host from the future, Neil Fox, also known as James Halliday, also known as Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. And here with me, as always, I have... Link the Labrador, currently putting a tinfoil hat on for this one, guys. It's going to be an interesting ride. Okay, well here, I'm going to hand you the microphone, uh, and you can yes. just tell the viewers what you were just telling me. So, what I was thinking, viewers, what I was thinking, needle in a haystack. Mm -hmm. So, what are the odds and probability of, what are the odds and probability of finding a needle in a haystack? I just need a simple answer for that. Uh, Eight-year-old would understand. Uh, real yeah. quick. Uh, finding a needle in a haystack, um, I would have to do a calculation to find out the exact numbers, but my guess is around one in one billion, or to put that in a human perspective, one in one billion would be seven people on Earth, because there are seven billion people. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, to move on to the next part of this analogy, yep. is... How do you increase the odds of finding a needle in a haystack? Mm. Now, if you reduce the amount of hay there is, the odds increase. Now, what if you stuck that same needle in um, a relatively low populated area, like sure. a small park, for example? Okay. What are the odds you would find it? Hmm. In a small park? So we're we're not looking for a needle in a haystack. We're looking on the on the ground of the park. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Sure. So the way that I would calculate something like that is maybe we do a um, and an say, army and we'll do, it, we'll do it by meters so that the calculation is easier. So we'll say a hundred meters by hundred meters. So yep. be around three hundred by three hundred feet. Yep. And you so have that would be ten thousand meters squared. And so if we said that a needle could fit in a meter squared, you could fit it in a millimeter. Uh, let's see, a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter, so you could multiply that by a thousand. That is way too big to do in my head. Um, okay, now let me simplify okay. all of that into you have a park that is how many square, uh, how many square feet, just how many square feet? Okay, we'll say uh, 10,000 square feet. So okay, 100 so, feet on a side. So 100 feet on a side, and now you have 30 per people who think there is a needle to be found, and you let them loose for... Uh, you let them loose. Yeah. What are the odds that you find a needle when you have 30 people looking for a needle? Even with 30 people, the odds would still be very low. Okay. It, it might take, say, a year to find it. Okay. So we're down to a year. Right. Which is not bad for finding, quote, a needle in a haystack. Now, let me boil this down even further. So you have 500 people looking in a park. Yep. And the park is... Okay, so you have... 500 people looking in a park, and the park is 100 miles by 100 miles in the sky. Oh, God. Okay. That and, a long time. Okay. And you're looking for a needle in that over the course of 18... Oh, uh, let's give it... 5,000, let's just give it, I don't know, uh, how long have humans been around? Modern humans, about 200,000 years. Okay, so you have 100,000 people in 200,000 years looking up for a needle. Sure, exactly. Now, mm -hmm. if I wanted, and, and that's the vast emptiness of space. Of course. And that needle starts to glow and transmit. 
Okay. Now, probably. now, currently in space, it is said that there is a black like there is a black object that transmitted radio signals to Earth before the Soviets put up a uh, before they put up their first satellite. This is a well doc. This is a documented case. You kind of have to go down a damn rabbit hole to find it, but researchers had received a radio signal. Are you talking about the wow signal? Because that was definitely after the first no. satellite. No. Nope. Okay. I, I'm talking about the black... Uh, I forget what the hell it's called, but it's basically just a black satellite that's orbited Earth for... <laughs> before Earth trashed existed. That... Would be surprising. I have not heard of that, but it's not impossible. I just I would be surprised because I've studied space a lot. Yes. and I've never heard of this. Okay. Again, it falls down the rabbit hole of. It falls down the rabbit hole of conspiracy. Some yeah. people think it's true. Some people think it's a hoax. Yep. But if it were true, okay, and something intentionally left behind, right. We would eventually find the needle because it wanted to be found. Okay. Might have taken 200,000 years. Might take even longer for us to realize. Now. Getting to act my theory on time travel. Okay. You would need to put an object. Before, you would need to put a uh, homing object. Yep. Yeah. In a dedicated universe, okay, where time and that's how time and that's how you create time travel is by having a universe where time travel well, time travel does happen, and then from there you can go you can tether yourself to that timeline, and then you just have that power transmitted so you go to other timelines. Okay, uh, is that the end of your theory, my love? Um. At its most basic fundamental level, says that everything is both a particle and a wave at the same time. Yes. Now, under our current understanding of physics, at least you know, as as me being a relatively amateur particle physicist, my understanding, based on reading a couple of books about it, is that under our current understanding of physics, that is not possible. If something cannot be, at the same time, a particle, which is a point in space, and a wave, which is movement through a medium over time, so, yes. it, it doesn't make sense. It would be like saying a body of water with waves and a marble are the same thing. That it, but, all that science is telling us is that our understanding of what particles and waves are has to be updated. Because these concepts of particles and waves were created in, I think, the early 18 or 1700s or something like that. So, you know, the, the concept of what is a particle and what is a wave was created long before we had particle accelerators. Yes. So it would make sense from a perspective of history to say, well, you know, we didn't know that the Higgs boson existed 400 years ago, so of course we defined waves as whatever we saw them to be. We're going to have a very interesting world. Indeed we will, indeed we will. Well, we should go into our sponsor, so we will end this segment and pick right back up. Hello, this is American... This is... The Fox wanting to take...